Avatar Korra, Korra, the master of all four elements. Storm, the X-Men's goddess of the storms. Storm. Weather, the building blocks of our natural world are nothing if not tempestuous and unpredictable, which war. means you gotta be some kind of badass to control them. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Okay. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. Avatar Aang, savior of the world, uniter of four nations, destroy- Before, before we get into the video, first of all, Aang is a better avatar than Korra. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aang was a way better avatar than Korra. Korra didn't really do shit, to be honest. Don't kill me in the comments. <laughs> Fire of cabbages. But like all avatars, after decades of service, he passed away. Humanity would have to move forward and prepare his next reincarnation to take up his mantle. But who could fill Aang's shoes? Her name was it's Korra. Wiz, who is that? Did you leave the door open again? Deuces, gents. Uh, unlike her carefree predecessor, the hot-headed, obstinate Korra was an Avatar yeah, prodigy was from before, day one. I'm the Avatar! She you gotta deal with it! Well, well Aang struggled to accept his role in the world, Korra never wanted to be anything else! Not only is she an expert hand-to-hand -hand fighter on her own, as a bender, Korra can manipulate the natural world around her through martial arts. And as the Avatar, she is the only living being who can bend all four elements at once. Water, earth, fire, air, hot, and you! Straight from the Southern Water Tribe, Korra can control tendrils of water, form massive walls of ice, and generate huge tsunamis. Aang once raised the sea level to put out these huge fires. Looking at the size of the area and what it'd take to submerge it, he had to move over 35 million metric tons of water. And since Korra is a reincarnation of Aang and every past avatar, she should be just as powerful. With earth yeah. bending, Korra can heave big ass boulders around, shape and control metal, and even tear apart the ground beneath her enemy's feet. Kind of like when her avatar ancestor Kyoshi broke up a chunk of a continent, dragged it across a bay, bending? and basically just created a new island named after it. herself. Queen no, no, shit. Not, but By measuring the tall. size of the island to get its Ain't mass and the size of the bay to get the world. distance Kyoshi dragged it, displacing this much rock would require an energy over 21 gigatons of TNT. That's almost 15 times more energy than the entire world's nuclear arsenal detonating at the same time. Yeah. With firebending, Korra can fire blasts of, well, fire, jet into the sky like a rocket, or breathe like a friggin' dragon. The perfect element to match Korra's hot-headed temper. However, her final element was completely different. Due to its inherently zen, free-flowing nature, Korra struggled, at first, to master airbending. But like all good prodigies, she figured it out anyways. With airbending, Korra can shoot powerful gusts of wind, fly around on tornadoes, and create a cute little air scooter. She used this element to defeat the bloodbender Amon, who was fast enough to dodge lightning. He is not the only one. Zuko and Iroh have caught and dodged lightning as well, and Iroh even caught one from the sky. The leader of a lightning bolt moves at 60,000 meters per second. Comparing the distance Amon moved relative to the bolt, he must have been moving over 200 times the speed of sound. But Korra's more than just a badass martial arts superhero, she also acts as the bridge between the mortal and spirit worlds. The spirit world is a separate plane of reality, and Korra is stronger while she's physically there. Her direct connection isn't coincidence. She and every Avatar before her are fused with the spirit of light, Rava. Every time the Avatar oh, dies and reincarnates, Rava searches out the spirit to bond with their new body, a staple of Hindu and Buddhist cosmology. I've done a lot of research into reincarnation, which I'll demonstrate today with Boomstick and this anvil. <laughs> now, the Avatar is usually reborn into a different nation, but I've set this up so Boomstick will reincarnate into the nearest vessel, this identical clone body. Hey, Will! I feel funny! Why are you doing to me? Where'd my banana go? Oh my god, the Scooby Doo <laughs> Cut off his leg and everything. Speaking of messing with your soul, Korra can remove or restore your bending, bring her past lives for advice, and tap into the kick-ass Avatar State. The Avatar State massively boosts Korra's raw bending power, turning her into effectively a demigod and the de facto most powerful being on the planet, if she wasn't already. Despite that, Korra's no stranger to failure. She was severed from her connection to the past Avatars and was almost killed while in the Avatar State, which would have ended her cycle of reincarnation entirely. That last brush with death left 
left her physically and emotionally crippled for years. Even after physical therapy, her fiery spirit struggled to reignite. Korra's entire so identity was wrapped, wrapped up in being the Avatar all the way from day one. And the biggest trials she had to face were when her place in the world was challenged. Would everyone be better off without an Avatar? Or bending at all? But Korra's nothing if not one hell of a fighter. No matter what life threw at her, she always got back up okay. to kick ass. Korra once blocked an energy blast from a giant spirit cannon, which oh, created yeah. this massive crater in the center of Republic City, and almost killed everyone. Taking a look at the width Damn. and depth of this crater, and assuming it was all vaporized, Korra must have held back a blast worth almost six megatons of TNT. More queen shit. And during harmonic convergence, Korra tapped into enough spirit energy to turn into a giant kaiju oh. and battled the dark avatar Unalak for the fate of the world. Wiz, I told you, we don't talk about season two. Okay, one was cool. Uh, from taking down <laughs> anarchist revolutionaries to fascist empires, Korra proved herself as an avatar worthy of her forebears. <laughs> With her teammates Mako and Bolin, teachers like Tenzin and Tom, and badass girlfriend Asami by her side, there was nothing she couldn't do. Queen shit? Queen shit. Come on, little girl. Give me your best shot. Wow. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Boomstick, do you know what happens to a Ali person Berry. struck by lightning? The same Ali thing Berry. that happens to everything else? You got it. Do you know what happens to white-haired mutants whose parents are killed by a plane crash? They become badass weather witches. After Aurora Monroe's also, parents were that, she was forced to fend for herself on the streets of Cairo under the tutelage of Ahmed El Jabbar. The life of a street rat wasn't doing it for Aurora, so she took off across the Sahara in search of a real home. And that's when she began to master her mutant powers. In the same way that Homo sapiens, humans, evolved from earlier hominids like Homo erectus, <sighs> go ahead. <laughs> Homo superior, or mutants, are an offshoot of regular humans. They possess the X gene on their 23rd chromosome that effectively grants them superpowers. But it's a lottery. You could end up like old Beak here. Yeah. <laughs> or you could end up like Aurora and possess complete control over the weather itself while being super hot, That's unlike say, Beak. Yeah. No, no! For all she knew, she was a goddess sent straight from heaven. Mm. And that's exactly what the local tribes thought when she arrived in her ancestral Kenyan homeland. Aurora's mutant gene allows her to psionically manipulate the atmosphere, capable of summoning a hurricane with less than a conscious thought. When she does feel like using conscious thoughts, something Wiz tells me I struggle with, Aurora can create storms that cover the entire Earth. Her weather mm. manipulation isn't just powerful, but precise. She can call upon massive tidal waves, conceal herself in fog, and even generate localized blizzards cold enough to freeze lava. She can summon Damn. bolts of lightning, even ones that are continents away, or generate electricity inside your brain. And she wants Zap Cyclops with enough lightning to restart an artificial sun called the Ring of Fire, a name that reminds me of the morning after Taco Tuesday. Encircling the planet Polarcus, the Ring of Fire provided all the same energy as a regular star. But her favorite element is probably wind. With it, she can blow people away with tornadoes, suck the air out of a person's lungs, and generate enough lift to fly. She once flew fast enough to reach the edge of Earth's really atmosphere from ground level in just this. a few seconds. By measuring the angle and size of the Earth to get the distance and estimating a time frame of about five seconds, Aurora had to have flown at 4,000 times the speed of sound. She can even manipulate solar winds to fly through space. Unlike winds on Earth, which are just the movement of air molecules through the atmosphere, solar winds are streams of charged particles, mostly electrons and protons, ejected from the sun. Almost as crazy as how she can breathe in the vacuum of space. She creates a mini atmosphere around herself by gathering, uh, stray hydrogen atoms. Atoms, those are like really small last time I checked. Are these writers just giving her whatever powers they want now? How is that weather? Aurora's abilities apply to any atmospheric conditions, whether they be in outer space or alternate dimensions. Essentially, anything even remotely considered weather. Man, I wish I had crazy writers giving me random superpowers just because <laughs> it's funny. That'd be awesome. 
Well, I anyways, feel like I'm gonna Stallone go use my rocket hands one. I've always had to get my beer out the fridge. Honestly. Away! Because <laughs> oh. what it looks Perhaps like Perhaps her most useful ability, though, is fun. to sense changes in the weather with a pseudo sixth sense. Aurora literally sees atmospheric patterns and energy as colors, with the world as her canvas. Right. She's so Very good with it, she could track a jet flying over New York while she was fighting the Shadow Gang in Wakanda. That's on the other side of the planet. Yeah, no wonder everyone thought she was a goddess. She is! Aurora enjoyed all the worship and admiration until the day she was contacted by an American, Charles Xavier, with an oh, interesting yeah. proposal. I'm gonna make him an offer he can refuse. Join the X-Men! Oh, pretty please! They were eaten by this living island! It's a long story, but we're short staffed Xavier founded the <laughs> X-Men as a team of mutant superheroes that would attempt to mend race relations between Homo sapien and Superior through non-violent means. Because what better way to teach kids in the 60s about the civil rights movement than with a bunch of good-looking, lily-white teenagers with superpowers from upstate New York? Feeling she had spent enough time blessing the rains down in Africa, Aurora agreed and was assigned the code name Storm. And she more than earned the spot. She's proven herself worthy to wield Mjolnir, led a war against the Inhumans, and even survived a blast from her own lightning. This is impressive considering her lightning is powerful enough to match Polaris, who once used her powers to punch through Earth's crust all the way to the planet's core. Yeah. Assuming she pulverized a cylinder of Earth all the way down, she had to have exerted over 15 teratons of TNT. She once beat the mutant Callisto in unarmed combat, and Callisto has apparently mastered every single martial art known to man. Despite her unbelievable power, Storm has trained extensively in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You get it? It also probably didn't hurt that she's fast enough to dodge literal beams of light. Oh, but did you get it, though? Nope! And after kicking Callisto's ass, she became the queen of these sewer-dwelling mutants called the Morlocks. She really just couldn't escape <coughs> being worshipped, could she? Even by no, grody no. underground monster people. Well, she later married the Black Panther T'Challa and became queen of Wakanda okay. too, so she really runs the gamut. But even demigods have their Achilles exactly. heels. That plane crash from her childhood left her crushed under rubble for days, giving her a bad case of claustrophobia that rears its ugly head every once in a while. But that's not enough to stop this queen. After the departure of Scott Summers, Storm became the leader of the X-Men, because of course she did. And when Jordy LaForge eventually came crawling back. The two fought over who would lead the team. Despite Scott literally being able to shoot death lasers from his eyes, Storm kicked his ass. And even better, she didn't even have her powers at the time. As it should be, because there's no one more devoted to her team than Storm is. She may be an Omega-level mutant, but her greatest superpower is her bottomless compassion. Mess with her team and you'll watch as Aurora's heart of gold quickly turns to ice, as she quite literally steals your breath away. Testing me, hmm? It's time you remembered why they call me Storm! Alright, the combatants are set and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you're dealing with the emotional weight of leading the X-Men or maintaining the balance of the elements, or, you know, normal stuff because it's 2021 nah, and everything's on fire, check out is. BetterHelp. Oh, oh shit. I'm so bored. Your powers are impressive, but you lack discipline. <laughs> I'm the Avatar, Master of All Elements. You want to see for yourself? Of course, Avatar. I'll show you what an X-Men can do. special here. That's a wrap. A move.
fuck is this? Oh, she's in the spear, bro. Is this Sonic's been <laughs> What the fuck? Who are you? Answer me! Okay. But not let her won't let you down. Oh, my camera is. Never be safe. Oh. It's too loud. I just did that. Fuck. You're no bender. The tools make this shit. So I just got two back and Like I know what you are, Spirit of Storms. Please take that spirit. Please take that spirit. Watch me go. Exactly. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm about to say, it's over. It's spooky. I ain't looking out. I'm about to say, though. Storm is kind of okay. Avatar. I bet one of my predictions is right. KO! Oh. I think I just queen shit myself. This fight wasn't totally straightforward. Korra can dominate most fighters pretty easy yeah. with her raw bending power and martial arts skills, especially with the Avatar state. Exactly. Not even some of the best benders on the planet like Zaheer and Kuvira could stand up to her at her best. However, despite Korra's awesome Avatar powers, she found herself outmatched by Storm's skill, precision, and overwhelming force. For instance, Storm's massively hypersonic flight and ability to sense and control weather across the planet meant she could always fight safely from a distance. Korra's trained in martial arts from birth, but even if she did manage to get in close and fight hand-to-hand, -hand, Storm's experience with the X-Men and defeating better. Callisto meant she could keep up. While Korra may have fought people who can dodge lightning, Storm can dodge literal Ooh, beams of light. light. Even just using her flight speed exiting the atmosphere, she'd still be nearly 20 times I faster than Korra. Though. Korra did have access to elements like fire and earth that Storm didn't. If she somehow found out about Storm's claustrophobia, she could theoretically trap her in some rocks to exploit it. But Storm would be more than powerful enough to just break out. Her lightning was strong enough to match Polaris, who punched a hole in the earth all the way down to its core. Yeah, ultimately, exactly. Storm was just way more powerful. Remember that planet-sized storm she created? Well, I know clouds are lighter than air, but those are a shit ton of clouds and need a lot of work to move around. By measuring their volume and the speed at which they moved, the end- Okay, we done with this. Uh, I don't want to hear this shit. <laughs> Yo, I, I I knew she was going to win, but I, it got, started getting spooky. It started getting real spooky towards the end. It was like, damn, Cora might actually win this shit because she, she, you know she was doing a little thing. But I was like Storm, I'm like, but the way they was like, you know, putting Storm out there, I'm like, bro, she's way powerful than Korra. There's no way in hell she should lose this shit. If she loses this shit, this shit is bullshit. But <laughs> anyway, guys, thank y'all for coming through. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, share the video, bro. Hit the bell, no, bell icon so you get notifications when I right, post, bro. And I love each other, one of y'all. And I'm probably going to drop another reaction video again, bro. Right after this. So. <laughs> Thank y'all. And I'm out.